if you haven't diagnosed it on the bed there and then, patient gets worried as the hematoma gets bigger, comes back, and then you've got a clinician who is unsure about what is the what is the actual cause of this delayed capillary refill. Welcome to the Aesthetics Mastery Show. I'm Dr. Tim Pierce. Hi, I'm Miranda Pierce. And today we are talking about hematomas and vascular occlusions. What do you do when there's delayed capillary refill the day after you see your patient plus a hematoma? Because a lot of clinicians get a little bit confused about what the correct path is. What we're going to do today is discuss how to make sense of that situation and what information might help you make a better decision for your patient. So I often see on groups, people will put up a video of capillary refill and it's really hard for them to know which, is it a, is it a hematoma or is it a, an occlusion? How do you even begin to d- distinguish? Yeah, so it is really difficult and I'm fairly convinced that there are many, many hematomas being emergency reversed and that's reasonable. Um, if you think about the consequences of missing a hematoma, sorry, missing a vascular occlusion and it actually um, causing a necrotic injury. But it is worth trying to minimize these false diagnoses. Like we, we need to somehow put together a case that leans one way or the other in terms of the safest likely output for us as, as clinicians. So um, the question is, it is absolutely a differential. Like hematoma can look a lot like a vascular occlusion, but what information can we add to that picture to make us more certain one way or the other? And also what is the best way of handling that situation if you are in a state of uncertainty? Like how do we rationalize a path forward that will make the patient as safe as possible? So that's what we need to dive into. So what kind of situations is this likely to present in? So the most crucial, most confusing situation is quite soon but not too soon after the procedure Um, and the reason for this is if you get delayed capillary refill straight after your injection it's fairly clear you have a vascular occlusion if you get delayed capillary refill plus a hematoma and it's two weeks after your procedure you can be fairly sure that that's not a necrotic lesion brewing because it would have happened by then you'd have signs of necrosis so our crucial period is probably kind of six to 24 hours afterwards, which is probably where most patients represent. And this is what's confusing. If you haven't diagnosed it on the bed there and then, patient gets worried as the hematoma gets bigger, comes back, and then you've got a clinician who is unsure about what is the what is the actual cause of this delayed capillary refill. I'm assuming there's delayed capillary refill, but there's a hematoma present. This is the bit we need to get um, better at avoiding incorrect diagnoses, you know, incorrect risks, you know, because it ends up risking the patient if you high layers everyone, which I'm sure happens all the time. Many people are treating hematomas as vascular occlusions because that's probably feels safer. Um, so how can we minimize that risk? Okay. So when, let's say that someone did present at that kind of six hour period after the procedure and you had them in front of you, how would you begin to decide whether it was an occlusion or a hematoma? So um, there are lots of things you could take into account. One is there is, you should be experiencing some pain by that point. Okay. So pain might be one thing that tilts you in the direction, but it's not 100% because some people have heard of people saying they've, they didn't really have pain and then it was necrosis. Certainly aware of one case where getting on to 8 to 12 hours after the pain was reducing, but it actually got very necrotic. Um, that was awful. So it's not 100% of a guy, but one factor might be is this painful or not? If it's painful, you might lean in the direction of it more, maybe slightly more likely to be a necrotic lesion. If it's particularly painful, I think a hematoma is a bit less painful, but it's very vague. It's hard to pin anything concrete on that. Um, Another factor might be the size of the hematoma. So if you've got a small bruise and lots of delay completely refilled, that would make me much more likely to say this is a blocked blood vessel, not a hematoma. So the size of the hematoma might make a difference. Why? Well, hemat- the only reason that hematoma causes delayed capillary refill is because of its increasing pressure in the tissue. So the bigger the blood clot, the more pressure in the tissue and the, and the, the slower it is for blood to return. I- in case you've not ever seen this, if you ever inject saline into someone and then do capillary refill, it will refill slower where you've just injected the saline. It's a simple matter of physics. Pressure from another compound of any type will delay the refill. So that's what a hematoma does. And um, now there is another thing to consider, which is there is a theoretical risk that a hematoma can cause necrosis if it's big enough. I think that's really rare. I'm not aware of a case of it. It'd be quite hard to know for sure, but I know from medicine, 
big hematomas from contusions, from injuries, from car accidents, sometimes they will get rid of them because they can cause necro skin necrosis. So in theory, a big enough hematoma might be a reason to use hyaluronidase because it does actually work. You can actually dissolve blood clots with hyaluronidase. So this this helps you in terms of decision making, but it does highlight that you know getting the diagnosis right is quite hard if you don't have enough information at the point of return, which is the next thing that I really want people to think about, which is if you've got detailed notes or even best better, I've seen a few clinicians who have the original video straight after the procedure, so they can literally look at what capillary refill was like after they after they injected and they got the bruise, and then they see the hematoma develop and a little bit more delay in capillary refill, they can say straight after the procedure there was no delay in capillary refill. Now there is, and the hematoma is bigger. That means I can be more certain that this is a hematoma causing this, not a vascular injury. How about the colour? Because obviously colour, the duskiness of the area can be a big factor in occlusion. So how would you differentiate between a hematoma colour and occlusion colour? Okay, so yeah, with a true vascular occlusion, there tends to be a, it's kind of an, there's, there's a, a kind of mottled effect on the skin. <clears throat> and there's also a, often a gray area that looks like, basically it looks like dead tissue um, in a in a complete vascular occlusion. So I don't think many people are confusing that because there there's zero capillary refill. You've completely got no blood supply, or it's like twelve seconds or something. That is dying tissue, and you'd 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 use hyalase straight away. So I don't think that's as much of an issue for in terms of confusion. It's the slight delay of maybe four seconds. 24 hours later that really gets people. But this would be one of the things that later on, I would not be blaming a hematoma. In fact, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't mind even if it was the hematoma causing it. If I've got a capillary refill of 12 seconds and it looks gray and there's pain, it needs to be reversed. So there's no point even worrying about is this, is this theoretically hematoma or vascular occlusion? You want to get whatever's there out so that you can restore blood flow to the skin. Okay. And tell us about the capillary refill times, is there any difference, you know, does the hematoma affect that at all? A, a large enough hematoma will cause a complete blockage. So it doesn't necessarily mean um, much about the original cause, but you should be able to relate the size of the hematoma to the delay in the capillary refill. So I'd expect a complete vascular occlusion to cause complete decrease in blood flow so that there's no capillary refill. A, a, hundred, a big occlusion is like that. Um, whereas the a hematoma would have to be very big before you got to that stage. You may not even be able to tell. And this is probably another confusing state is if there's enough blood around, it can be hard to even do the capillary refill test. Or if your patient is very pigmented, it can be hard to do the, the uh, capillary refill test. So then you might want to do a little pinprick and see if it bleeds. Okay. So is it as simple as tell us more about the pinprick? So this is in the case where you just can't see the skin go pale and then come back um, to full color again. So one of the little simple tests you can do is just stick a needle in it and see if it bleeds normally. Um, so a little bit more painful than a normal CRT test, but it at least, if there's blood coming out, you know there's blood supply there. Okay, okay. And I've observed that one of the things that tends to happen in the groups is that a patient will go away, they'll go home after the procedure, and then the hematoma starts to spread, and that's quite shocking. It's shocking for the practitioner as well. Mm. So often the picture will come on the group and everyone starts to talk about it at the point where it's really spreading up here. Presumably that would then tie in with if the capillary refill is delayed, it's probably more because the hematoma is massive. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, this is where your history is so important. And, and if you saw that original bruise or your routine is to check capillary refill after every procedure, which I highly recommend you do, um, I do when I'm cleaning the skin, then you can interpret that spreading bruise for what it is, which is there was good blood supply, now there isn't, um, but there's there's loads more blood. Um, I understand that anxiety. If you've not, if you're fairly new to aesthetics, you haven't done that many procedures. It's even if you have, sometimes you just get a really big bruise and it's nerve wracking. I remember one of the biggest bruises I've ever had was for for one area of Botox mm -hmm. injected the procerus here and hit the cephalic vein. Two massive black eyes. She wasn't on aspirin. There was no de definite cause, but it was shocking to me. And you almost want to see the patient and check them because it's so out of the ordinary. But you've got to stick to your first principles, which is, is capillary refill normal? Was it normal after the procedure? Is there any sign of necrosis? Because it's all usually the best thing to do as little as possible, because otherwise you, comp you make things more complicated than they need to be. So tell us about that situation, because let's say that you your gut is telling you to reverse and 
you almost, you want to reverse because then you avoid a potentially worse problem down the line. Where's the balance with the fact that also highlights could cause problems? Well, I think it's worth firstly really looking at what is the impact of hyaluron days because um, a lot of people find, especially if they've not used it before, especially in anger, like there's a resistance to use it and you feel like you're you're increasing the risk, maybe you're making things worse. And there really is only one side effect, which is an allergic reaction. You can do a skin prec test, which might give you some protection, um, but it's not it's not as high risk as, as missing a diagnosis of vascular occlusion. So if you're if you're unsure and it's you know it's ten o'clock at night and people on the groups are unsure and you're you just don't want to miss the chance to rescue your patient, it might be appropriate to reverse it just to be sure, because the penalty for not getting it right and discharging a patient who then gets a scar is, is fairly high. Um, with experience, you'll get better at knowing when you don't need to do that. But but I think it's reasonable given the relatively low risk of hyaluron days, it's reasonable to do that. I, I wouldn't, I would be scared of taking an approach of if it could be a hematoma, I'm not going to reverse it. It's better to reverse three hematomas rather than miss one vascular occlusion because what's the risk? It's It actually does help with hematomas and as long as they're not allergic, you've, you've probably lost something on the treatment value because they're not going to get a result. But apart from that, it's relatively low medical risk. And if you've got a good reason and it's minimizing uncertainty, minimizing the chance of injury, that seems like a sensible approach to me. Okay, so what's a summary of the actions we can take to help us make the decision? So it's once again, it's always about the big picture. If you want to minimize the chance of getting the wrong diagnosis at the six to 24 hour mark after hematoma, first you need to do your procedure in a way that decreases the risk. And then you need to check the, the validity of that. You know, if you've got a, um, a good record of normal capillary refill, completely normal, the patient returns with no pain but a hematoma and slightly delayed capillary refill, that's a hematoma. That's what I would say. You can be much, pretty certain about that. Um, so the first thing is to record your CRT time after each procedure. The next thing is to take into account how both hematoma and vascular occlusion evolve over time. So you should know that if you're going to get a necrotic lesion, it's not going to happen a week after the procedure. It's probably not even going to happen four days after the procedure. It's probably in train by then. If your patient has no pain, a hematoma, and it's been four days and they've not had any pain at all the whole way through and there's only a slightly delayed capillary refill, that's much more likely to be hematoma. If there's an area of zero capillary refill, then that changes everything because it doesn't matter if it's a vascular occlusion or a hematoma. If you've got no capillary refill and you're sure of that, you need to decrease the pressure in that tissue or restore blood flow by unblocking the artery and then you should reverse it. I would also take into account the, the two choices you have in a moment of uncertainty you, you can either minimize that uncertainty with using hyaluron days um, or you can give it some more time. How safe are you to manage those two choices and what is the risk of using hyaluron days? If you're happy that the risk of using hyaluron days is lower than the potential risk of not using it, then you can justify that decision and do, do what you think is safest for the patient. Great. Are there any resources that we can that can help us? Um, you can have my emergency reversal protocol, which is attached to the link down below. And that gives you some pictures that show you the, the way to handle a vascular occlusion. I know many people have got it already, but if you haven't, make sure you get it today. It's very visual and that helps you when you're dealing with an emergency. Brilliant. And don't forget guys to like this and comment below. We love your comments. And if you've enjoyed the show, then hit subscribe and turn on the button to get notifications for our next show. We publish every Thursday night. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.